What laptop would you recommend to a college student within a thousand dollar budget? Son, get an iPad. Just get an iPad. Okay, this is Ahmed Bouriki, but you can call me Slorx, and I'm sorry, this video was supposed to come out last night. However, life happened, so I'm releasing it this morning. Hopefully, I just don't screw up that algorithm. I hate you, YouTube. But anyways, let's get to the questions right away, and there is plenty. Would you recommend Microsoft OneDrive storage service for personal use, or do you think that might dump it soon, like what Google does recently with their fairly new services? Thank you for the great content. Um, you're welcome. And um, no, look, Microsoft services are completely different uh, in terms of strategy in comparison to Google. And Google never really um, dumped a service that is actually working. That's why Google Drive is still there, Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google Sheets. They're all there and you can use them for personal or business use. They're, they work very, very well. I use them personally and you can use OneDrive. I personally prefer Google just because it's accessible on more devices and I prefer using that with along my other Google services so it works really well. But if you wanna use OneDrive, please, by all means. It works also very well. Ahmed, do you regret being a full-time YouTuber? I mean, from a financial perspective. Yes, every day. <laughs> It's the truth. Um, I mean, if I go back in time, would I quit my day job so I can become a full-time YouTuber and I knew those circumstances were going to happen? I would not. But I did not have the knowledge. That's why I am in the position that I am in today. Honest to God, I've been making less money year after year rather than making more money on YouTube, specifically on YouTube. But... It is what it is. If you didn't have the passion, you would not go on. So if you're doing this or you're thinking about doing this for the money, do not do it whatsoever. Do it for the passion. That's the only way you're gonna continue. How are you, my friend? I'm very good, thank you for asking. Do you have a long time plan for this English channel? We enjoy this content, please reassure us about that. Yes, that's why if you follow me on the Arabic channel, you would realize why I did not use the same introduction on this channel. On the Arabic channel, I said this video will be launching for the first time on Instagram and on YouTube. On the English channel, I'm keeping it only on YouTube and for good reason. I believe this channel one day will get more attention than the Arabic channel just because it reaches a wider audience due to the English speaking. There are more people in the world that speak English than Arabic, that's a fact. And there are more people in the world that speak traditional Arabic than Kuwaiti, that's another fact. And I do not speak traditional Arabic on my Arabic channel, I speak Kuwaiti dialect which if I'm lucky, there's a million people that can speak it, period. But the fact that I do speak fluent English and I have this knowledge in English to start out with, this channel will get the utmost priority always. What happened yesterday is something that was literally out of my hands, but I am committed to keeping this content alive and that's why I'm launching this video today instead of yesterday and that's why I'm gonna keep putting videos out every single day until this channel gets somewhere. So I am committed to this channel because there's potential. First of all, man, you are my best tech reviewer. Thank you very much. You are my best, uh, you are my best commenter, if that makes sense. And I have to tell you that I'm watching a lot of tech content already, but when I decide to buy something tech, guess what? Your review becomes the most important one. And, and that's why I make videos, people, because of something like that. Thank you very much, sir. Your review becomes the most important for me and my decision depends on your opinion and your reviews results very ti every time because of a lot of reasons. So you have to know it's not about numbers, it's all about influencing. Love you, man. Thank you so much, man. You deserve you deserve a like. Second thing, your dream car. <laughs> right now, it's completely different than my dream car when I was growing up. So when I was growing up, my dream car was the Knight Rider kit. You guys know Kit? It's a Trans Am. It's a 1988 Trans Am. Here, let me uh, let me bring up a picture of a Trans Am. So yeah, this is Kit. This is the Night Rider. So when I was growing up, this was my dream car. I wanted this car so bad. So when I actually got a car, I did own a Trans Am. I had a uh, a 1994 uh, Trans Am. It was red. Um, I drove it for a while. It was literally, it looked exactly like this, more or less. Um, I do have pictures of it on Instagram. If you guys want, you can look it up. Um, you, you'll find it. And then I got a 2002 or 2001 uh, Trans Am Ram Air. Uh, it was in uh, Navy and uh, it looked it looked like this, basically. Um, I also have pictures of it on Instagram. So this was my dream car as, as I was growing up. And of course the Corvette, because my dad had a, uh, a 1989 uh, white Corvette. It was a ZR1, I believe. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. And I was like, you know what? I want a Corvette when I grow up. So I was uh, lucky enough to own a Corvette. It was a 2006 uh, C6 
uh, Corvette with the Z51 package in black. And uh, there's also pictures of it on my Instagram account. It looked exactly like, where is it? Well, it looked more or less like this one. It's a C6 uh, 2006 model Z51 package. So yeah, it looked like exactly like that. Those are the stock rims and everything. But the Corvette continued to be my dream car. And I was planning to get a C7, but then got an RCF, a Lexus RCF. I have pictures of it as well on my Instagram account. Um, but then when I decided that I have to grow up because I have children and be responsible and all that stuff, I stopped thinking and dreaming about cars and just getting something that's practical up until I started daydreaming about the Silverado Trail Boss, which is my truck right now. And then I fell in love with trucks and my dream car as of this moment is this. Um, my dream car is this car, people. Because I fell in love with the tra Silverado Trail Boss, so I want a truck and my dream truck right now is this beast, the Hummer. E V. Oh my goodness. That's my dream vehicle right now. I hope one day I'll be able to get this truck, even if it's a barter deal with GMC. Hello. But yeah, this is my dream car right now, the Hummer EV. I think it's a great, fantastic, phenomenal vehicle. I'd look cool driving it by myself. I'd look amazing with my kids and my wife and, and just taking it out every single day. It's EV, it gives you equivalent to a thousand horsepower engine. It has over 11,000 feet of torque, which is a lot of power for off-roading or for towing. Um, it's lifted up to 11 inches if you needed to. It has this thing called the crab walk. It has T-tops, it has everything that you would want in a dream car is just beautiful. I love it so much. So yeah, Hummer EV, that's, that's, that's where I'm at right now. Thank you, I like Microsoft products, especially Surface Pro for your review of it. And I was the only one who reviewed it in Arabic and thank God I was able to buy it. I'm very excited about the Microsoft phone with two screens, but I do not see you either enthusiastic or admirer of it. So what are the things that must improve in the device uh, to be good for, okay, dot, dot. So um, I do not like the Surface Duo because it has aging, aging hardware and crippled software. I think the user experience is not consistent. What Microsoft did is adopt Android and then put a skin on it when, on old, really old hardware. So I do not see it getting updated uh, in the future. And on top of all that, it's so expensive. It costs as much as a folding device. Just get a folding device. I think, I think it's a flop. And only time will tell if Microsoft will continue to support this device. I do not see it happening, but I could be wrong. But that's the reason why I'm not excited about the Surface Duo whatsoever. Do you encourage smokers to resort to electronic fumigation? Just stop smoking, man. Uh, true story, I used to smoke. I quit smoking 11 years ago and it was cold turkey. I never knew my last cigarette was my last cigarette. I didn't want that little tiny thing to control my life anymore. This is a message for everybody. A public service, please do not smoke. Hi brother, I have a question for you. What's the future for Apple's chip M1 on iPhone? I discussed this a lot, I think on the Arabic channel, but I don't think I talked about it here on the English channel. So I do believe that Apple will involve some sort or some way um, of the M1 chip being on the iPhone, just not specifically the M1. I mean, they will use and utilize their SOC on an iPhone, uh, the same one that's on a, a MacBook, for example, just so it will be so much more powerful. And it'll make sense when, when the operating system iOS catches up to what the capability and the power it can do. For example, iPad, right? Now the iPad Pro does have the M1 chip, but iPad OS is not sophisticated enough to have a really high end professional applications where you can utilize the power that the M1 can give you. Today is gonna to be WWDC 21, and I'm so excited for iPadOS, hoping that we do get some sort of support for those professional grade applications where it'll make sense having a really high-end device or a really powerful iPad. So if you're gonna have a really powerful iPhone in the future, it'll only make sense if the applications on that iPhone will be on a professional grade level. So that's the only time it'll make sense. Cause right now the iPhone performs really, really well with, with you know Apple Silicon as it is with A15 Bionic or A16 Bionic or even A17 Bionic in the next two, three years. But to put an SOC as powerful as the M1 chip on something like an iPhone or an iPad, you just need the software to catch up so you can utilize the power that you will be getting from this SOC. I hope this makes sense. Best tablet for an Android fan, a Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Pro. That's the best one that's available. But I would hold out because I'm sure the S8 is around the corner. But yeah, if you wanna get an Android tablet, that's the one to go for. I have a question. If Google Camera upgrade the performer of any phones have Snapdragon. I love you from Algeria. Well, my friend, I love you too, Algeria. 
Hello. Um, yes, any phone that you can get a Snapdragon on, technically you can fit it with a Google camera APK and it'll make your phone so much better. And Google knows this. That's why in Google IO they said that they're gonna be working on enhancing the camera features software wise, not just for Pixel phones, but for all Android phones, whatever that means. So in the future, if we do get this capability in terms of software and AI and all that stuff, you will get better performance out of your camera if you just install the Google Ad Camera APK, which is available on a lot of devices, specifically Snapdragon phones. Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro and why? Well, Final Cut Pro, just because the exporting and the rendering is so much faster than Adobe Premiere on any machine you can get it. It's a fact. Apple makes Final Cut Pro, Apple makes Mac OS, Apple makes the MacBooks. So there's utilization of all this hardware and software and synchronization that you can get between them. It's optimized to the fullest. I render videos a lot faster and more efficiently because of Final Cut Pro being on a Mac machine. Adobe Premiere, if you put it on the highest end computer, Windows PC or the highest end computer on a Mac, you're not gonna get as efficient as a Final Cut Pro. So Final Cut Pro all the way. Do you think other companies would take so much time until they send Android 12 to their devices and how would it work on these devices having their own OS, Xiaomi for example? Well, what we've seen over the years is that the fragmentation of Android operating system in terms of updates is getting less and less, which means more phones are getting updated to the latest Android software faster than it used to happen before. So in terms of Android 12, I do see it happening beforehand just because as a beta version right now, it is available on a lot more devices. So those companies are already working on their custom skin built on top of Android and we should see the update happening a lot more quicker than we did the previous year. So I think Android 12 rollout will be better than Android 11, and Android 11 was better than Android 10, and so on and so forth. Your thoughts about Android Bush's dream phone? Uh, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. The utilization of an S Pen and the folding form factor, I do believe folding form factors are the future. Um, I wouldn't want my phone or my dream phone to fold three ways. I just think it's gonna make it a lot thicker than I would want. But I think it's really, really cool, not just that he has an Android smartphone that is a dream phone for him, that he was able to render it. That's on a new level in terms of Arabic viewers and Arabic content creators. So Salah, my buddy, my brother, Amazing job, my brother. Do you think Fuchsia OS will be the future of Google's operating system for all of its hardware, considering the fact that it's not based on Linux and will it compete with Apple's system? Yes, it will compete with Apple's system and I do believe it's gonna be the future on all hardware coming from Google. I talked about this, I think, in the Arabic channel. Again, I don't know if I talked about it in the English channel, but I see the future of Fuchsia not taking over Android, just being Google's thing. I don't think Samsung will make a Fuchsia phone or Xiaomi making a Fuchsia phone or anything like that. I do not think it'll be licensed as an open source, kind of like Android right now. No, it's gonna be Google's thing. So in the future, we'll be seeing three operating system. We'll be seeing iOS and Apple's ecosystem, just only for Apple, we'll see Fuchsia and Fuchsia's operating system and all hardware just for Google, and then we'll see Android for everybody else, all other OEMs, which will probably push them to make their own ecosystem, starting with Samsung and Xiaomi, just saying. But I do not see Fuchsia replacing Android as of right now. It's gonna take another couple of years before they do that, but Fuchsia is something to look forward to in terms of how Google can integrate it in their ecosystem and build those walls just like Apple did. Best perfume, ha, cologne. And yeah, I, I wear, true story, I wear Zara Kids Batman colognes. I'm a Batman junkie and they smell great. Why don't you make a specific content for the English channel? I will, there are things that will not come out in the English channel that are gonna be coming out in the Arabic channel and things are gonna be coming out for the English channel not coming out for the Arabic channel. But I explained this before, as of right now, I just want my content to be translated just because I do not want to think about it. I wanna build that base, that foundation, and then there's gonna be the differentiation factor. For an average student user, the best office setup experience, which is the best choice in your opinion? Buying an iMac 2021 M1, eight gigabytes since uh, I'm already Apple products user or complete setup Samsung 34 inch ultra wide monitor, blah, 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 with a Mac mini or another device. No, go for the iMac 2021. It's an all-in-one device. It's gonna be cheaper because you're gonna get a beautiful display. And since you're already an Apple user, it's gonna fit in perfectly with your ecosystem. Go for an iMac device and eight gigabytes of RAM is more than enough for a student. You don't need to go for the 16 gigabytes unified, but I would ask you to go for the middle route, go for the four ports and the ethernet and the charging brick instead of just the two ports because two ports are gonna fill up very quickly. But yes, go for an iMac 2021. And yeah, first comment in just the best. Thank you guys. I think we did cover all the questions. I hope I can continue covering all the questions in the future. But um, thank you guys so much for continuing to 
to support this channel. And please, if you do like this content, consider subscribing by clicking on that red subscribe button and enabling the notification bell. And do give us a like. And uh, I'll see you guys again today for the uh, tech news segment. And um, yeah, sorry this video was late, but better late than never. And as always, people, take it easy.